On this week's show, Jeff downsizes a bit and checks out the new hybrid trailer from Jayco and sees just how much room a hybrid has to offer. Then, we take another look at a new lock system that makes multiple keys a thing of the past. Later, we'll check out Jeff's tip of the week and Evan shows us how to grill up a quick, manly buffalo chicken sandwich. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. This is the new Jayco Jayfeather 16XRB trailer, a hybrid model. And these trailers were called hybrids a long time before the Prius came into existence. And this particular trailer has a lot of fun and functional features that you may find pretty interesting. So you have a couple ways to go. You can go to a travel trailer or a tent trailer. A hybrid combines both together so you have the uh, facility of a full-time trailer and yet the uh, flexibility of a uh, fold-down trailer. But the walls are hard, you have holding tanks, you have a shower, nice refrigerator, and yet you have sleeping for up to six to seven people in a very small unit. Jayco has built family-friendly RVs for decades, and the new Jayfeather 16 XRB continues that tradition. The 16 XRB was a good towing match for our Nissan Frontier pickup. The lash-up was stable and secure on the road, and its compact overall size made it seriously easy to maneuver. There's no campground road anxiety with this rig. A short trailer makes short work of backing into a campsite, but it still helps to have a spotter with a radio out back. Deploying the stabilizer jacks is a must-do first step for campsite setup. These guys make life in an RV a lot happier. Power awnings are a popular feature today and the 16 XRB is fitted with a 12-footer. An awning is one of the most useful items you'll ever have on an RV. As Gary suggested, a hybrid trailer like this offers you the best of both worlds. Hard side trailer and features of a fold-down tent trailer. For the hard side part, obviously you've got hard secure walls that are well insulated. You've got a lockable door that helps keep your stuff yours. Inside, the bathroom is contained in here. The kitchen, you got a little dinette and a little table and storage and whatnot. And it's all within the hard side part. But then, the, the ends of the trailer fold open to create these wonderful large bed sleeping spaces. And in a place like this, where we're right next to the river, when you're sleeping out there, you can hear what's going on out in the real world. And that's really pretty nice as far as we're, we're concerned. Setting up these end bed platforms is even a lot easier than it is on a typical fold-down tent trailer. You release the latches up here, fold the platform down, and there's no support struts underneath to install. There are a pair of heavy-duty cables on the inside that provide the weight loading support. And the fabric is already attached, so all you need to do is drop these little flaps down that helps to keep worst of the rain and such from coming inside, and you're pretty much ready to go. The balance of the exterior trailer setup was like any other RV, plus firing up the water heater. Now this little Jayco has something that we haven't seen for a little while, which is a manual ignition water heater where you manually activate it and have to light the, the, uh, the, the pilot yourself. And there's nothing wrong with this kind of a water heater. It's somewhat simpler and it's also less expensive than the auto ignition ones. Turn that around. We have the pilot lead on the inside there. Hold it down for a few seconds to warm up the thermocouple. There we go. Not too difficult. We leave it turned on for the whole time we're out here camping. Shut it off when we head home. Piece of cake.
Okay, we've got the end tent platforms open, but we haven't got all of our pads set up yet. Now, anytime you're in a smaller trailer like this, it's always a compromise for where are you going to put stuff while you're setting up. So we've got a pile here to put to, to set up. And we'll start by just putting the pillows out of the way. Travis sack. And these two cushions are folded up, and these go on the bunks on the ends of the bed then. So we'll... Uh... It's not normally this cluttered inside. When the trailer is broken down for travel, these mattresses store flush with the folded up bed platforms. The setup process we did is a one-time project when the trailer is new. As you can see, once you get everything in position, the setup looks pretty nice. You got lots of space here in the front float fold-out bed platform, and they have both a foam cushion underneath and kind of a padded topper on top to which we have added our Travis sack. Very comfortable for this application. There's all kinds of storage in a small trailer like this. They use every possible space, like the compartment directly underneath the seat here, for example. And there is a nice cubby hole in here that runs the whole width of the trailer, as well as a couple of them up here. Um, there's storage over above the kitchen, but we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Here in the dinette, which you can also uh, fold the dinette table down, of course, to turn this into a little sleeping space. But uh, between the front bed and the back bed and this one, that would get a little bit crowded. But if they're kids, they enjoy being crowded, so no problem. But this table is kind of fun because it's also portable. It's just set up on a set of collapsing legs underneath, so you can take the table outside and use it if you don't have a table out at your picnic at your campground, or if you just want to augment the space and bring the table over to be able to sit by the fire and have a space to set your drinks down, for example. Um, the rest of the rig is pretty well set up, very nicely appointed, and the having the the hard shell trailer space, including the bathroom and the kitchen area means that there's enough space for those that they don't have to be jammed in so tight since the beds are all out here. So we'll take a look at the kitchen next. We'll be right back with the kitchen and more on the 16XRB right after these commercial messages. So stay tuned. Thetford's tough new Titan sewer hose is virtually uncrushable. Ever had your sewer hose run over by an RV? Watch Titan bounce back. Titan hose is made of Thetford's proprietary blend of TPE and provides the highest degree of puncture and abrasion resistance. It has an easy to grip fitting for a leak free connection to RV outlets. A rotating elbow easily aligns and allows a convenient connection and straighter flow. Titan provides more for your money and is another innovation from Thetford, the RV sanitation leader. You have a Truma Aquago instant hot water system. You can expect to make a lot of new friends. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Let's continue our look at the J-Feather 16XRB Ultralight Trailer, a well-designed hybrid model that's a good fit for many RVers. Now the kitchen area, as you may expect in a smaller trailer, is a little bit compact, but it's not bad for what you get. And in fact, you have a very large triangular open piece of working, uh, working countertop here, which is nice. You got your two burner gas stove, single bowl plastic sink, large enough to be practical enough to actually do something in it. Large storage spaces down below. Another storage cabinet on this side. One item that you're missing in this kitchen is any kind of drawers for silverware and such. Uh, because of the sink and the stove, it's a little hard to get anything like that in here. That's why we have some of these various appliances sitting out in the open. Uh, you're going to have to come up with some kind of a tray that goes in an upper compartment or something like that in order to keep your, your silverware and other gear in order. But you've got plenty of room for meal preparation. And of course, you've got your overhead ca uh, uh, vent hood and fan and so forth. And your microwave oven, which is really important for that morning uh, uh, oatmeal, for example. 
So for small trailers, it's a really nice kitchen. On the other side of the aisle here, got a Dometic two-way refrigerator. It's either 110 volt uh, AC or propane. And you've got a few appliances up on top here. And this area needs a little bit of comments. Uh, this little platform here on top of the refrigerator cabinet contains several items. One is this really nice Furion flat screen TV, which you can rotate back around to be able to see better from the, the bed or the sofa or the dinette table. This also has the air conditioner and the stereo. Now the stereo is back here, so you kind of have to reach around the television to get at it, which is a little bit on the clumsy side. And the air conditioner is also back here behind the stereo. It's a wall mount unit. It's not a traditional RV ceiling air conditioner. Wall mount unit with the cold air exit grills on the top of the air conditioner. So if you have the air conditioner running, the air either has to come out of the space here on the edge of the TV, or it can kind of filter out here just a little bit up on top. This arrangement, um, it is functional, but it could sure stand to be a little more efficient. Our Coleman coffee maker was a natural fit under the fridge. The bathroom is roomy enough to do the job in a tight space. And there's a feature here in the bathroom that we don't see very often in RVs. Usually it's the customer that has to add this stuff after the fact. We really like it. So over here, just a couple of simple coat hooks on the wall, but it gives you a place to hang your towels and your clothes. And that's a really handy item. Thank you, Jayco. Now the front bed, of course, is our sleeping space. But because we don't have anybody else with us that we know of, we use the back bed for storage space. And it, both beds have this little uh, 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 curtain designed for privacy, which doesn't slide very smoothly. And, ooh, hello, we have... Hello. Hello, stowaways. Okay, we've got to tell the people on TV what this is all about. So you guys jump on out. Okay. 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 Climb on down. Very good. Thank you. And hustle on outside. Okay. Anyhow. We have the, 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 the storage space back here. We use for bags of clothing, um, our box full of camping gear, and so on. It's very handy to have this much wide open space available in a small rig like this. Works out pretty nice. Easy towing, parking, and campsite setup, plus a comfortable level of back-to-basics camping simplicity are hallmarks of the 16XRB. It's a worthwhile contender in the ultralight trailer arena and is definitely worth a detailed look if shopping for this class of RV is on your agenda. For more information about the Jayfeather 16 XRB, log on to our website at rollinontv.com. Coming up after the break, Jeff shows us a revolutionary new lock system that solves that multiple keys problem. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at Jayco.com or just log on to RollingOnTV.com. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcole RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcole.com. There's a wide variety of products out there designed to improve your RV's security. In other words, to keep what's yours, yours. Well, Stratec Company has come up with a new line under the bolt lock name that has a very interesting feature. Each lock is designed to work with your vehicle's ignition key. The locks are available uh, to fit most of the popular lines of tow vehicles out there today. Ford, GM, Dodge, Nissan, Toyota, and others are being added all the time. And how they work is, you buy the locks designed for your key, you start 
by removing the little security tab in the bottom. And the first time you insert your key, you plug it in all the way, give it about a turn and a half, and that lock then learns the combination from your key. So when you have something locked up, put in your lock, your key, and only your ignition key can operate it. Well, that's really handy because that means you don't have to have a handful of other keys available for all the locks to work on your vehicle. The company sells a wide variety of products. These all have a heavy duty rubber housing, protected from the weather and protected from shock including a cable lock system, which of course uh, works for securing things that don't have a direct padlock mount on them. Stretch the cord out here, through. And we're good to go. And of course, the all important art receiver hitch pin designed to keep your receiver on your vehicle because receiver theft is something that comes up once in a while in campgrounds. Receiver hitch programs pretty much the same way. Pop the little tab off, insert the key, give it a twist the first time and it learns the key. Securely locked. comes right open. Got a little cap for the end here, protect from the weather. It's a pretty cool system. So if you'd like to remove a little bit of the complication from your key ring and your RVing life, check into this new line of bolt locks. For more information, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. You've got a lot of choices and accessories and cool things you can use to upgrade your RV. One very worthwhile accessory or a good option to buy when you buy the trailer new is these crank down stabilizer jacks. You crank these things down and when you're parked it helps to stabilize the trailer and keep it from shaking all over the place. Very worthwhile investment. However, there's still a little bit of leverage and a little bit of flopping around that can take place. So something else that you can add to it is this type of stabilizing uh, brace for the, uh, for the stabilizing jacks. This particular brand is JT Strongarm, but there's a lot of different ones like this on the market. You don't have to install it. They stay in mounted permanently to the frame and to the jack. You loosen this t little T-handle up. When you crank the jack down, you tighten up the T-handle, and this provides a tremendous amount of triangulation to be able to keep the jack from wobbling back and forth. And you can also install these front to back so you can solidify this mount tremendously. Anyway, these st crank down stabilizer jack uh, braces, they're all over the place on the market. Take a look at them. And if you use this type of jacks, this just may provide that extra amount of rigidity that you really like for your trailer when you're camp. And that's your Rolling On TV tech tip for the day. Next, Ivan rolls up a hot, spicy sandwich that'll go perfect with a cold brew, or whatever. But first, a word from our sponsors. Never run out of propane again. With Level Check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank, and when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level Check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com. For 50 years, Campers and RV has been your trusted resource for RV sales, service, and accessories. Now, with 15 locations along the East Coast from New Hampshire to Florida, we'll be giving you that same family-friendly service and be your trusted resource for another 50 years. For information and locations, visit us online at campersin.com. Hello campers, RV Cooking Show Ivan here. Yep guys, we heard your plea for a couple of manly dishes and we're prepared to deliver. 
This week we're making something crunchy and spicy and gooey on the grill. Something I think you fellas and ladies alike are going to really enjoy. It's buffalo style pressed chicken sandwiches and they're super easy too. We're gonna use some rotisserie chicken, a little blue cheese dressing and hot sauce mixture, some pepper jack. We're gonna fire up the grill to create this surprisingly simple, but shh, don't tell, taste sensation. So let's do this thing. What we've got is we've got our hoagie roll or our sub roll, and I've sliced it. You can leave it hinged if possible, that's always best, but if you break through, no problem, it's okay too. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slather on this blue cheese hot sauce mixture right on the bread. Mm. Great, next we're gonna put our pepper jack cheese, put a piece of cheese on either side like so, and then our chicken. This is rotisserie chicken, chicken breast picked right off the cooked chicken from the store. Doesn't get easier than that. And lastly, we're gonna put a little bit of our hot sauce. Now I use red rooster sauce. I also like Frank's. I also like Louisiana hot sauce. Whatever hot sauce you have in the house works just great. So a little bit of this for some extra spicy on the top. Perfect. Gonna close this up. Sandwich is ready for the grill. All right, here we are. I've got my grill preheated on high. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna turn it down to low before we put our sandwiches on because we don't have anything here that we wanna cook. We just wanna toast the bread, heat everything inside and make the cheese nice and ooey gooey. So I'm gonna turn it down to low. I've got some beautiful extra virgin olive oil here. I'm gonna brush some olive oil on the top of the bread. This is gonna help it crisp up. And it's gonna add a little bit of flavor. We've got some to use when we flip the sandwiches. Okay, just like this. I'm gonna put the oil side down on the grill grate, like so. I've got a big, beautiful spatula. I'm gonna press these sandwiches down so we get beautiful grill lines and everything is nice and compact inside. It's been just a couple minutes, so we're gonna check and see how our sandwiches are coming along. We want them to be nice and toasty. Oh yeah, these look just about perfect. Yes, indeed, so we're ready to flip them. We're gonna do exactly what we did with the other side of the bread. We're gonna take our olive oil, we're gonna give a nice coating on this side of the hoagie roll, or the sub roll, depending on what you call it, like so. And again, we're gonna flip this bad boy right over. And we're gonna press. Perfect, we're gonna take them off and we're gonna bring them inside. Let's cut up these bad boys. Grab my nice wood cutting board. Sandwich is right down on it. Okay, you ready for this? Mmm. What a crunch. Well, here we have it. See, I told you it was easy and delicious, and of course, manly. And don't feel like you have to stick with these sando fillings. You can mix it up. Make a hot roast beef and cheddar, a ham and Swiss, or even a veg version if that's more your thing. No matter what you try, this quick and crunchy sandwich is perfect for lunch or dinner, company or family, or even to impress your lady friends. I'm RV Cooking Show Van. Give this one a go, you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again right here. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this week's show and for additional information on anything you saw on the show along with additional videos and stories, visit our website at RollingOnTV.com. 
You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. As usual, this has been another fun production. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com.